So, Mr. Best Davis, welcome to Amazing Live. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be here. Yes, I'm so excited. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to you too. Um, I love your smile. I don't know if I've told you that before, but it really lights up your <laughs> face. It's very nice. It's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, how is the new weather, you know, change of season? How are you finding that? Uh, well, it's, it's not a good thing for me. I don't know if you're able to tell. It sounds like I'm talking through my nose. Whenever there is a change in weather, I always have allergies. So I always deal with seasonal allergies every year. It's, it's ridiculous. It's bothering me. So that, that's my take on the weather. Other than that, the weather looks perfect. Good. I know. I know. The sun is out, finally. Um, finally. Happy. Finally, finally. Um, yeah, seasonal allergies is something we all suffer from. I actually do. Um, some time ago, it really used to be bad for me. And I think, I mean, someone told me it depends on where you live in some places. And I think at your end, um, that, you know, DC area is really bad. Because I, I remember when I lived there, it was very bad for me. Yeah, it, it's funny. It doesn't really bother some people. I don't know why it's kind of sectional. It bothers a few people and not all the people. And we all live in the same state, so I'm not sure what the cause is. But right. in my case, it, it's really, it bothers me a lot, a lot. Right, right. This is how I see it. Those that it bothers, they're the chosen ones. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> They're the chosen ones, so yeah. But I'm so excited to have you on, and um, we have a lot of things to talk about today. But one of the things that crosses my mind because we're talking about weather change is this coronavirus. You know, people are saying that with the weather change, um, it's going to dissipate. Or do you think it's going to get worse? Which, which, what school of thought are you? I am of the school of thought that believes the weather will make it kind of gradually disappear. Uh, based on, I'm not a medical, I'm not in the medical profession, so I right. just read and listen to what the experts say. Mm -hmm. um, they do. They did mention that it does not, this virus does not thrive very well in a hot weather. So being that we're getting into summer and the weather is beginning to be very hot, I, I believe it will begin to, uh, begin to dissipate gradually. I, I hope so. I'm thinking so. Because I also see people getting less and less compliant with the directives from the government and the health experts. So I'm hoping that it goes. I'm just believing it will leave just as it came. Be gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think one of the reasons I believe it, the weather will help reduce it is because uh, there are different states are beginning to ease up on their uh, restrictions, the lockdown and all, what have you. Mm -hmm. And under normal circumstances, if, the, if we're still in a cold weather, you one would have expected a spike. <sighs> but it hasn't really spiked up. Mm. Uh, especially with, like you said, people not following um, mm. the, the rules, mm -hmm. not social distancing. And mm. I, I think the only thing people are doing mostly is just wearing masks. Other than that, uh, one would have thought that the thing would have spiked up, but it's Still didn't spike up as uh, as much as it would have, so that's one of the reasons why I believe the weather will help reduce it. Okay, so if you're just tuning in, this is Ameza Live, and I have with me today the very entertaining, informative, and very talented um, Mr. Best Davis. And just like his name connotes, he does best in everything he does. Um, one thing I actually want to talk about, and I was actually impressed by this, 
is um, we cannot but talk about what you know the climate what's going on right now um, not just in the United States but also around the world and um, which I'm going to do something you know by the time I have this up um, on um, my YouTube channel I'm going to link it to the monologue you did which really really I liked a lot so um, what inspired you to do that <clears throat> um, I, I, like you rightly said, I, I like the entertainment industry. I've been in there for, for, for years now. And there are a lot of things going on in our nation today. And it is so heartbroken, so heartbreaking. Um, it, it, it's ridiculous the way blacks are being murdered. Uh, police brutality and all that and a lot of people are lending their ears listening to people and blacks are commenting blacks are speaking their mind um, even some whites and I feel obligated because I'm black and not just because I'm black because I'm a, a, I'm a human being I'm of the human race uh, I don't believe in segregation. I don't believe in racism. I don't care what color one has, black or white, red or yellow, green or purple. We are all human beings. So I, I felt obligated to speak up, so to say. And the only way I know how to is by way of entertaining. I, I, I feel as though if I were to go online and rant and yell and scream and shout at people, People might not listen to that. So the best way for me to reach people worldwide is to kind of do a monologue. And that's the best way I can express myself. That's, that's, that's my way of speaking to people's conscience, people's minds, and uh, try to convince them to understand that there shouldn't be segregation. There shouldn't be racism. God created everyone the same, regardless of color. We're all the same in the sight of God. So that's my way of reaching out to people. And I, I believe that's a better way of reaching people in my own case. Um, I, I don't know any other way of preaching to people about what's going on than doing the monologue and expressing my views and my, my feelings about what's going on. Wonderful. And like, um, like I said, I'm actually going to find a way to um, get that linked to my YouTube channel, which today officially has been changed to a Meza Life. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, and uh, so it just rhymes with the, um, the podcast, A Meza Life. And uh, that's a wonderful thing, Bess, because when I listened to your monologue, I, I was touched. And not just because I know you, but I, just the fact it was a different take of communicating. And um, I, I was, I, I felt the pain, you know, again, I'm not going to give it away, guys. You need to go watch um, Best Davis monologue, which, uh, Best, where can they find it? Where can they watch it? It's, it's on YouTube, um, Best Davis show on YouTube. Um, if you go to my Facebook as well, Best Davis, there is a link there that I uploaded um, on Facebook. So once you click on that link, it'll take you directly to YouTube and you can watch it. It's a lovely thing. And, you know, um, yes, there's a lot of unrest going. I think change has come. I think change has been, um, it was going to come anyway, you know, because the world is changing, you know, different from how we know it, how it's been in the past, you know. If there's one thing that is constant in life, and people will tell you this, is change, you know. So, yeah. And uh, something you mentioned when, you know, um, during your response to um, my question about monologue. You said even some white people. Actually, I think there's a lot of white people. And I, that is something that's important. You know, um, some time ago, not too long ago, actually, someone very dear to me told me that, and I think it was during, mm, I'm trying to remember now, it was when, um, you know, the terrorists, you know, all that bombing, suicide bombers and what have you. 
And I remember he posed this question is like, what are the, um, the non, you know, the other Muslims, what are they doing? When you stand by and you keep silent, you're complicit. It's, I mean, it's no different, you know, if you're so, if you think the little, you know, the small number, the small fraction, you know, percentage of people give a bad name, then you should um, stand up and say, hey, look, you're not a part of us. This is not, this right. is, this isn't right. us. So, so it's, it's up to the other part. So if we have, you know, and I'm, I'm really happy about the things I'm starting to see. If you go to my Facebook, Ameze, Ameze, that's something I kind of share because I'm all about being positive now having said that that doesn't mean that those that are angry cannot be angry because it's something that makes you angry you know it's um yeah it is it's something worthy of note you know changes come i do believe that you know um if you feel that the police those police people that are you know being brutal and be inhuman to a sect of people which in this case mostly black um, then it's up to you, the rest of the force, the police force, to say, "Hey, look, you don't, rec you don't, you don't represent us, right?" If, right. Uh, because you right. can't expect. Because some people think the minority are the ones to effect a change. No, that's why they're the minority. The majority, who's part of their their part, you know, section of them, are doing these bad things. The majority needs to stand up and say, "This doesn't represent me," you know. And, um, and that's what I think we're starting to see. We're seeing a lot of people, um, black and white, brown, pink couple coming out and say, look, let's stop this. You know, there's yeah. only one country. There's only one word. There's one, one race. And that's the truth. You know, be, be, beyond this surface, um, everybody bleeds red blood. You know, yeah, but, I, I, I totally agree, um, especially in the United States of uh, America. There is only one flag. If you're an American, you pledge your allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. So Lovely. there is no black flag of America. There is no uh -huh. white flag of America. So everyone should focus on being united. It's, it's, it's called the United States of America for a reason. So I, I don't see any reason why race should bring division between what should be united and and and. The allegiance is pledged to the flag, like I said. That there is no black leadership. There is no white leadership. We have one leader, and that leader should focus on all Americans, not a section of Americans, and, and relegate the other Americans. If you're an American, you're an American. There is no... Uh, uh, unfortunately, people tend to say African-American. That's because of the color. But American is American. So there shouldn't be segregation. There shouldn't be racism. Uh, I, I don't believe in divide. I believe in united. So it, it's the United States of America. Everyone should be united. Like you said, uh, silence means consent. If, if you see something that's going wrong and you keep quiet, you don't say anything about it, that means you are in accordance or in agreement with that wrong thing that's going on. So definitely speak, speak your mind. Speak up. And let people know where you stand. I, I give kudos to those police officers that are standing with blacks because they know what's going on is wrong. God bless y'all for, for being what you doing what you're doing and may God reward you. Yeah, yeah, that is so true. I mean I love talking to you. I mean the truth, like you said, there's no black flag and there's no white flag. I didn't even see it that way, but that's a point right there. There is no white flag and there is no black flag. There is just one flag. And that's what right. you pledge your allegiance to. And it's the United States of America, not the divisive states of America. Interesting, interesting. It's, um, you know, food for thoughts. Um, again, if you're just tuning in, there's a Meza Live, both on YouTube and um, our podcast. And thank you so much for that. That's, that's something... Um, and I'm hoping my listeners and my viewers are going to take away, you know, it's just lovely to see how people think. And I think um, another friend of mine, you know, said this for whatever is worth, and I think is what something she said, you know, racism had a field day in the past because there wasn't a lot of coming together. 
but now it's very rare to see a family that doesn't have black and white in them. And boom, I'm like, whoa. She's like, yeah, that's why now you see this en masse people coming from different places and they're all together because somewhere in their family, there's a black person, you know, yeah. Black best friend, black husband, black kids, you know, because if you're biracial, you're black, you know, yeah, and that's absolutely. how it's in, you know, that drop, you know, whatever. Um, so that's why you see that with the newer generation, the younger generation is a new thing. They did not grow up during segregation. Right. So to them, this is the norm. You know, they have black friends, <laughs> you know, they have black sisters, they have black girlfriends, they have black wives, black husbands, black co-workers, black best friends, you know. So she said, that's why now it's like catching fire because, and, and it's so funny because when you listen to things like this, you're like, oh, because when she said that, I'm like, oh, she's like, yeah, that's why, because people, we did not grow up in the segregation era where they didn't know better. You know, and this lends support to, there's another video going around now where someone did, um, and I always love videos like that because they give you hope. I'm all about hope and fostering positivity. Now that's not to say that one doesn't get angry. I am not trying to undermine or to dismiss those that are angry. I'm angry, you know, mm -hmm. um, but then like you said, your way of communicating was just doing that monologue. And guys, you need to see the monologue. It showed, you need to see it. You know, it's just about someone feeling pain. You need to see, you need, you know, again, that's the different ways to communicate. You know, there's a video going around now where I think it's a, it's a white family and this guy, you've probably seen it. He was showing videos of kids hugging each other, black and white, black and white. And he was asking the kid, the kid never saw, mentioned, he noticed the grass, the flowers, the, you know, the gestures of those kids that this one is trying to kiss this one, this one is trying to hug this one. Black never came out of his mouth. He's like, is that all you notice? He's like, yeah. And what the parent or the person asking the interviewer was like, oh, this one is black. No, the boy just saw this one is holding hands. And in every, and I think there were four pictures, you know, or videos. In every one of them, it was uh, a black child and a Caucasian child. The child didn't see that. Hate and racism is taught. It is taught, yes. It's not something Absolutely. you're born with. You're taught it, you know. Kids Absolutely. don't see that. Kids see friends. Kids, see, you know. So um, that was a lovely thing. And I think, I believe it's going to get better. Do you think it will get better? I think what... This, now, this is my opinion. I believe it will get better, but I, I, I don't think it will get better soon. Mm -hmm. it's, like I said, it's my opinion. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I feel the whites are trying to fight against blacks is because blacks are beginning to dominate. Now, they never thought bringing blacks from Africa by a slave trade to come into America will be something that will grow and become part of the nation. So because blacks are growing, it's beginning to intimidate the whites. They feel one day blacks will take over the United States, which they feel is originally theirs. First of all, the U.S. is not originally for the whites. The, the original people that live here are the Red Indians. So it's a big fear that has grown in the lives of whites. They feel one day blacks will take over the whole of the United States. And it's, it's killing them. It's eating them up. What they try, try to do now is reduce the number of blacks, make them, subdue them, so to say. That way they won't get up there and take over the entire entire world. Mm. But I still do believe it will it will change. I mean, it will change. There, there is nothing that starts. There's no beginning without an end. There is always an end to anything. I mean, to everything, actually. Interesting. Interesting take on that. 
I mean, you know, um, appetite changed in South Africa, you know, so mm -hmm. eventually it will change. You know, I, you know, one thing you said, it's, uh, it, it's slow and steady, but it's, it changes definitely going to come. You know, it's a new, it's, 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 it's a new day. It's, um, you know, we're not growing up in segregation, you know, so people, I don't think, and interestingly, is not just in the United States of America, this thing has gone global. Yeah. You see all those videos, this thing has gone global because eventually people are going to do the right thing, you know, how soon, how, I don't know, you know, but it's just I was, that. I'm uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was talking to my wife um, the other day and we were talking about George Floyd. Mm -hmm. There was a video that surfaced with him and his daughter. He was carrying the daughter on his neck and the daughter was telling him, Daddy, you are going to change the world. Oh my God. Yeah, and and I, I look at what's going on now. I'm like, wow, it is really happening. I've it never seen a world. situation where a black was murdered and a protest in this magnitude took place. It, but I, I'm actually shocked. It, he is changing the world. Mm -hmm. Look at what's going on. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if you are aware, the mayor of D.C., painted Black Lives Matter on a major street leading to the White House. He changed, I mean, she changed the name of the street to Black Lives Matter Plaza. And the, the protest is not only, like you said, it's not only happening in the U.S. It's happening worldwide. Worldwide. London, worldwide. Germany. Australia, in Africa. Everywhere, everyone is coming out right. in India, in China, everybody's coming out. Even the places right. you didn't think they would, everyone is like, No, come on, no, come on, this has gone too far. Wow, it's um, really changing the world, even in death. Clearly, it's in death now. He's a you know, he's um, he's immortalized now. So, that video, right. his daughter said that the daughter said it to the father. Daddy, you are going to change the world one day. That was prophetic. Huge prophetic, yes. Oh my goodness. And wh when I saw the video and I see what's going on now, I'm like, wow. The Lord used this girl to say something like this. That was prophetic right there. Yeah. Oh my it God. Get, it gave me chills. Hey, I'm getting chills. I'm just getting chills. Just That was prophetic. Little did she know she was prophesying there. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Anyway, um, yes, you know, I couldn't start this program or this episode without acknowledging the fact that the things going on in the world and it all started with George Floyd. Now, having said that, that's not to say all oh, this didn't come before him. Please get me right. I'm saying that it was his that is quite pivotal and you heard best. Um, his daughter actually <laughs> prophesied about that because some people hear this because sometimes people hear what they want to hear. And that's, that's, that's like politics, you know, they take something and they hijack it and everyone uses it to buttress their points wrongly or rightly. Mm -hmm. So this is a Mesa Live. Thank you for tuning in. I am so excited about this episode. I'm with my good friend here, Bess Davis. And uh, something that I'm going to talk about. <laughs> now, after your, um, the podcast, the episode I did with you, where I asked you about, um, you know, I asked you as a married actor, how you deal with what goes on. Oh yeah, I got, I got letters. People like to write me. Mm -hmm. They did. And then when you mentioned your wife now, so I'm like, oh yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> Yeah. That indicates the next segment we're going to. I'm just going to read this. I'm going to have my glasses on so I can, can totally. Uh, okay. So this person says, and this person is, um, 
Her name is, I think it's Linda. Linda spelled to it L-Y-D-A. That should be Linda or Linda. I think it's Linda. And she's like, well, interesting episode um, with Mr. Best. Mr. Best. Okay. Mr. Best boasts, you can hear me, right? Yes. Okay. Mr. Best boasts about his wife, about his wife's understanding and support of him. And then she's like, hmm, it's okay to boast. However, I think Mr. Best um, has it good because not everyone, not everyone understands not everyone understands or enc encourage people. Her question is in two parts, actually, but I want to take this part uh, first. She's like, Mr. Best, you're boasting, right? Mr. Best boasts um, about his um, th 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 support from his wife, but he needs to understand that not everyone gets that kind of, lives that kind of charmed life. <laughs> charmed as in, well, you're boasting and it's fine. And she even said, just as the host, well, hostess, host, um, because it's something I brought up, you know, and I had um, asked you about it. It's like, not everyone lives such a charmed life. Um, it's Mr. Best saying that if he wasn't an actor, I wanted to take it in different steps, but it, it's Mr. Best saying that um, if he wasn't an actor, he would have been married, if his wife was an actress, he would have uh, been married to her if this if the thing was flipped so i'm like i gotta bring you on because i'm not gonna answer for you so and i do know we, i kind of asked this question during the interview if you remember and i know people like those are the kind of things people like to talk about but linda is asking that you boast and maybe rightly again i'm not going to talk for best let best do his thing um but that if the if the, if the tables were flipped would you have married your wife? She was an actress. Mm. Well, first of all, um, I do appreciate the question Linda asked, and I do appreciate her point. I want to correct one impression. I wasn't boasting. I was just saying that I am blessed. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I understand not everyone is going to be in the same shoes as I am. Right. Uh, it's nothing to boast about because I, I've been in the industry for years and I know what goes on in the industry. I'm just one of the very few that is blessed to have an understanding partner. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of marriages crumble just because a, a one of the partners is an actor or an actress. In my case, it didn't happen. I get every support I need um, I, I don't know if I mentioned this during that podcast interview. My wife is my number one critic and she's my number one fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I do things, if, if she's watching any of my movies and she sees I did not do it right, she will tell me how to do it. You should have done it this way. If it was flipped, you should have done it the other way. And it's not something to boast about. I, I'm just blessed. I'm just one of the few, one of the few blessed ones. And um, going to the other part of the question, if the table was flipped, would I have married her if she was an actress? Well, it depends on the situation. Okay. <laughs> Linda wants to know. Um, <laughs> I mean, when, when, when we got married, I was just getting into... I was just getting into the industry. Um, she probably didn't know what she was getting into. Mm. Or she probably did. I don't know. I, we've never talked about it. Um, I've been in the industry for years. If I were to get married now as an actor and my wife, my to-be wife is an actress, would I have married her? Yes, I would. Because I know what goes on in the industry. I know it's all about trust, though. Right. It's all about trust. Right. If you trust your partner, there is a limit. There, there is a line that cannot be crossed. Right. And you trust and believe that your partner will not cross that line. And if that trust is there, there's nothing to be worried about. There is no fear because, you know, she got your, I got your back. She got your back. <laughs> you know? 
Yeah. And I know I got her back. If what? I'm outside of the house, I know what things I should be doing that will not destroy the marriage. She knows what things she should be doing that will not destroy the marriage. So I don't I don't think it's anything about what of uh, anything about being an actor or an actress. It's all about the trust and understanding. That's that's what I okay. feel. Right. Okay. Mm, that's cool. Um, she's not the only one who wrote. People like to um, some. I, again, I know you said it's nothing to boast about, but I think it's actually everything to boast about. When you're blessed, you boast about it. You know, it's um, it's it's working for you, and that's good. You know. Well, the reason I said that, um, I mean, some people might boast about it, but that's not me. I would I wouldn't want to boast. Here's what I believe: if things are working for you. Don't brag about it because okay, you don't know what bragging, other people are going through. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that, that's my philosophy. Mm -hmm. Why would I brag about it and rub it in the faces of people who don't have the same thing that I have? Okay. So that, okay. that's just me. So that's what he's, you're trying to clarify. It's not that you're bragging and saying, hey, look at me. You didn't know what I did, but whatever. Okay, gotcha. Correct. Yeah. So this, and that's Linda. Guys wrote too, you know. <laughs> This one is funny. This one is from Peter. Peter, Peter is like, oh God, this is a Nigerian man. <laughs> He's like, Why you got to say it like that? No, it's because of what he wrote. He's like, Ross, leave that thing. If your wife was an actress, you will not marry her. And I'm speaking as a man. Okay. Okay, that's his opinion. Yeah, I'm not going. To, I'm not going to dispute that. That's what he thinks. That's what he mm -hmm. feels. That's not what I feel. Mm -hmm. We're not. Your, your understanding is not Peter. Your understanding is not the same as mine. If that's what you think, you're entitled to your own opinion. Very hey, right. Go ahead. If, yeah. if someone is an actress, you feel like you can't marry her. That's you. As mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. what I will do is not what you will do. So you yeah. can't really say something that. You don't know about you, you really don't know about me so right. you really cannot answer questions that concern me right. i'm the only one who can answer questions that concern me very true well said they think they can shake you they fit in they can't shake you <laughs> <laughs> no i mean everyone everyone is entitled to your to their opinion you can speak up i mean sometimes we learn from other people i will not dismiss any question anyone asks um, I get it. That's how they feel. Yeah, yeah. Remember, I told you guys. I said Bess is going to be back because I'm going to like his male opinion on certain things. Um, again, I'm just the you, you know you there, there were letters. There were there were letters. Um, I'm look. I can answer. We can answer everything um, because I wanted to make it because men. Who knew men write? They do write. Um, yeah, who knew that? I well, they have opinions. I mean, please get me right. I'm not saying men don't have opinions because you know how people love to take things and just run away with it. No, the fact yeah. that they're engaged enough to want to voice their opinion is actually um, inspiring. Well, then someone wrote to me and said, um, "This one, okay." Yeah. Again, it's all about this um, acting thing. Okay. So this one is like, now that you have, oh God, people are funny. Now that you've claimed that, you know, you've been an actor and your wife going, is the same thing. You know, if she now decides to want to go into acting, would you let her? I, I guess you answer that. Would you, or would you not? Okay. Uh, that's they, 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 they really, yeah. They want to know, Mr. Best. <laughs> like, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't remember if I said this during that podcast interview. Acting is a career. It's, it's the same thing you being a doctor. That's what you do. It's your job. If me being an actor and my wife decides, hey, I want to be an actress too. And that's what she wants to do. Not just because I'm doing it. <laughs> we have to talk about it. We, we, we really have to talk about it and figure out why you want to get into acting. 
it it a passion. People are going to respond to this one. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a passion. This is what you want to do. Not just because I'm acting. You want to act too. I must act too. Right. You know? <laughs> So, <laughs> if if she really want to pursue acting as a career as a job, mm -hmm. by all means, she has given me the support. Why wouldn't I support her? Mm -hmm. It should be reciprocal. Mm -hmm. right? It should be reciprocal. So um, yes, I my answer is absolutely yes. If my wife wants to become an actress, by all means, I will give her every necessary support that she needs mm -hmm. because I know how she has supported me. And I know it hasn't really hurt my marriage. It's not going to hurt it for her being a, becoming an actress. Hmm. So you heard it, people, all those people asking about. I guess some people, <clears throat> hold on, this, I'm trying to scroll. <laughs> um, because there's one, I actually starred them, but it's like the stars went off. Um, some people didn't know you were married. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, and th and I think that's that's good. You know, um, she's like, wow. I guess Mr. Yeah, Bruce is married. Know. I don't I didn't know. Wait, hold on. I need to read this. It said, wow, Mr. Best is married. This is from Stay Stacy. I thought it was St Stacy. He said, wow, Mr. Best is married. Who knew? There goes my chance. <laughs> 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 oh my <goodness>. It's like, <laughs> who knew? Well, I guess that goes my chance. Oh, it's like, okay, well, you have a chance. You can, I mean, you have a, you answer her. I'm not answering on your behalf. I didn't All right, Stacey, I, 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 I am so sorry uh, <laughs> that you lost your chance. Um, <laughs> I, I, I wish it had come before now, before I was married, probably would have had a, I don't know, I don't know, but, um, um, you Stacey, know, I don't think so. I'll, I'll okay. Let, let's look. I don't know how old I'll, I'll Stacey is. Work. I don't know where Stacey is from, but it's, uh, it's a compliment. Why am I answering for Bess? Bess, you have the floor. <laughs> well, Stacey, I, I, I totally appreciate your, like I was trying to say, I totally appreciate your compliment. Um, you did not totally lose out. Uh, I, t I take it you follow me. That's why you you were saying that was your chance. Um, hey, we can be friends. We, it, it, not just being married. Uh, tell us about who you are. We can be friends. We can chat. We can talk. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people actually don't know I'm married. And I have a reason for that. Hmm. You want to share? I do not. I do not associate. I don't link my family to my craft. Meaning, if you go on my Facebook page, I don't post pictures of my family. I don't say anything about my family. I keep them separate. I, I don't intermingle my family affairs with my work affairs. And that's because I don't want anything to dent or tent or spot anything on my family. You know, being, being in the spotlight, little thing will cause uh, controversies. Little thing will, will bring about, uh, what's this word I'm looking about? Uh, uh, oh, my goodness. People write, people talk. Yeah. They will pull they will pull up your history, they will pull up everything about your family, and they will talk. The truth, the wrong, the bad, and the ugly. That's why I keep them separate. So absolutely people, I am very, very married with children. Very good. Right? <laughs> very married with children, folks, okay? Very, very married with children. <laughs> don't, don't be deceived by the looks. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm actually enjoying this. I really, because again, I didn't remember. I start some, you know, and it's like the stars. I'm not the most techie of people. I always tell you guys this. And besides, I'm doing so many things by myself. 
And if any of you want to offer your services for free, please, you know, editing, um, social media, um, marketing, and what have you, hit me up <laughs> because it's a lot of work. So that's Stacy there. I didn't even, um, cause I don't remember. I just like, um, let me start this. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, interesting. And something you said, which is also going, it's like, which is kind of moving along how, you know, in the direction that I intend for us to go. Um, something you had mentioned is separating your work life from your personal life. And I think that's very important. Even if you look at not just in the entertainment business, but even regular folks, I mean, everybody's regular, but you know what I mean? Um, you always want to be, you, you need to protect relationships because you being in the entertainment and that's where, that's the business we're in. You might develop um, a thick skin. Your family doesn't necessarily have that, you know, they've not, that's not them. That's not their job, you know? So you need to be protective of your spouse, your kids, your family, you know, those that you care about because yes, um, entertainment industry it's all about make-believe it's all about stories and people love stories people like to sensationalize things so yeah and you have a lot of envy jealousy and what have you and people will make up stuff it's like politics it's dirty people will just for whatever reason just want to um throw your balance and part of it is attacking your family mm -hmm. So that is good folks, not just for entertainment industry, but also um, if you value what you have, protect it, okay? <laughs> like, I don't know if you've heard this before. There's this popular saying, quote, however way you want to call it, that if you value something, um, let it, release it and let it fly, right? If it is your... <laughs> If it is yours, there's a friend of mine. <laughs> and if it is yours, you've heard that, right? You've heard that. Yeah, yeah. If it is yours, it will come back to you. <laughs> there's a friend of mine. Like, but, but, <laughs> not, not in the case of Stacey now, you know. What? <laughs> not exactly. in the case of Stacey. It's too late for Stacey. <laughs> it's like, if you have something, you better not let it go. <laughs> Oh, it's, gone, it's not coming back. It's not coming back. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh my God. My friend said this. I laughed so hard. It was, it was just, <laughs> I couldn't stop. I was like, if you have something, you better not let it out of your sight. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. What? Release it? Oh, somebody else is going to see the good and get it. And then guess what? They're going to cage it up. <laughs> So even if you want it to come back to you, it can. It's gone. <laughs> oh my God, I'm laughing so hard. Oh God, yeah. So um, that was funny. So um, to the next segment, which is all part of, I mean, this is people just taking things from your podcast. And one said, um, because one of the things you had said is women. And this is actually, I start this too and I actually see them start. And one of them is tell them best, tell them. Women listen to gossip. Women are the, women orchestrate the downfall of their marriages and relationships because they like to gossip and listen to gossip. So remember you had said something about, <clears throat> because I think I'd asked you what, um, what are the things that would, to save, a, you know, uh, keep a relationship, you know, or keep a man or something like that. I think that's yeah, yeah. And you said that women yeah. should stop um, listening, listening to something, excuse me, something you said that actually I liked. You were like, if, if uh, someone comes to you to talk to you about your husband, well, tell them also to tell you about their husband. That's, that's, you know? that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, people will, yeah. <laughs> If you can tell me about your husband, then I can tell you about mine. If you're not willing to talk about your husband, let's not talk about mine. Mm. Basically, yeah. But do you believe that, I mean, this person wrote that women, this is actually a woman, um, Mrs. 
Mrs. Jones, she says, that's her name. Anyway, um, do you think she's right though? Do you think women, do you think failed marriages are blame, a, a woman's fault? Because some people believe that. Not all of them, not all of them. But I can, I can say the majority of failed marriages are caused by, I wouldn't say by women. I, I, I don't want to point fingers on women or men. Uh, most failed marriages uh, as a result of ill gossip. Hmm. Yes. It, it, it really doesn't matter whether it's from the man or from the woman. Once you begin to mis listen to people tell you stuff about your marriage, tell you stuff about what's going on in other people's marriages and not mm. talking about their marriage, mm. there is a problem. Mm. Why aren't you telling me something about your marriage? You're telling me about Mr. A's marriage. You're telling me about Mr. C's marriage. You tell me about Mr. B's marriage, but you're not talking about yours. What's up with your marriage? So if, if you begin to listen to people like that, they will put some bug in your ear and not just bug, negative bugs in your ear. And each time you get home, you will replay those messages, those conversations. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to look at your spouse differently. Mm -hmm. So the best, the best way to avoid such is if someone brings anything about conversation or discussion about other people, no, let's talk about ourselves. Hmm. Let's not talk about other people. Let's talk about, it's you and I right here, right now. Let's talk about ourselves. What are we doing? What are we going to be doing? What's going to happen to us? Not forget about other people. Let that be their problem. Let's talk about our problem. We have problems. We can carry other problems in addition to our problems. Let's deal with our problems. And then let them deal with their problems. So if everyone follows this principle, there'll be a lot of saved marriage. Interesting. So you don't think that marriage is what about infidelity? What does what does that what part does that play? Do you think infidelity actually that's the second question? Um, someone said, you know, not just so much gossip. She said this person said, What about infidelity? Do you think do people heal from infidelity? That's a tough one. Then again, there is nothing that has a beginning that doesn't have an end. Do people heal from infidelity? It's a yes and a no um, answer. Yes, if you believe in God, because you know the teachings of Jesus Christ, and you will follow the principles of Jesus Christ. No, because who cares? <laughs> you treated me bad, I will treat you bad. And now that's not me. I'm just saying about the two different uh, people. Right. The first section of people are people who know God yeah. and they know repentance. Right. They know forgiveness. forgiveness. Yeah. But the other people, no, I do not care. You give me one slap, I will give you two. Whoa. Let's fill the pain together. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, some people do heal from infidelity, and no, some people don't, depending on what their beliefs are. Hmm. I don't, you know what, I'm trying not to personalize it, because sometimes, I, I don't know, today I'm not feeling like personalizing it. Um, hmm. I think, what's, let me see, what do I think about it? No, I actually agree with you. It depends on actually what your beliefs are and what's your level of love, commitment, what you have at stake, because there are people who, you know, infidelity happens, but the best case scenario is not to end everything, you know? So, right. And I think it's really a personal decision, you know, because what it works is. for A doesn't necessarily work for B. So um, right. I get that. Yeah, I get that. And that in, in and therein lies, I'm gonna tie it to that gossip thing. You know how and not just women, men do it too. Actually, if you ask me, I think because there's just so much words out there or advice for women to stop listening to other women, there's not a lot of men telling men not to. Okay, let me rephrase that. I'm thinking there's actually more gossip from men to men. Because there's always this thing, 
I believe so. There's always this thing about, ah, just like uh, Peter, I think that was Peter that wrote to you and said, leave that thing, you know, yeah. because, yeah, because, I, and you see, having someone like that, and Peter, this is nothing, I'm not dinging you or putting you on the spot. No, it's your opinion. And it's, I, I totally appreciate the fact that you wrote about it. And that's how he feels. He's not going to do what Bess did. He's just, that's not him because it's not wired that way. And I know when we did that podcast, I spoke for people with that because we'll have different wirings. But I think there are men out there who tell other men it's not a manly thing to, okay, let me put it this way. Women are more apt to forgive infidelity than men. Why is that? Let me, let me have best answer and then I'll give my two cents. Hmm. Women, that is interesting. I think so. I never thought of it that way. Well, here's the thing, though. It's more difficult for a woman to kiss and tell than a man. A man goes out and cheats, and he's going to talk to his buddies about that. Oh, look at her. I, I, I did this to her. I did that to her. And then it will not end there. The friends that he has talked to goes about talking to their friends too. That's where backbiting comes into play. Uh, that's it. I, I think, and the way the way uh, society has made it look, it looks as though it's okay for mm -hmm. a man to cheat yeah. and not a woman. Mm -hmm. If a woman cheats, they feel it's a taboo. But if a man cheats, they feel, oh, well, it's something that happens. No, it's not okay. It's not something that happens. And I feel that's why it's easier for a woman to forgive than a man because they feel, oh, women shouldn't be cheap. If a woman steps out of, steps out of the marriage, it's a big, it's a huge pain. And then it becomes very difficult for that man to look at that woman the same way. And it's very difficult to forgive. But for a woman, because they feel as though it's a normal thing that men do, they can, they, so to say, they are created as cheats. Mm. So it's easier for them to forgive because they feel, well, it, it's, a, it's a normal thing. It, it happens. But for a woman, it's not a normal thing. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. If it happens at all, then it's a bad thing. And then the guy, if, if it happens to Mr. A, the friends to Mr. A will be like, oh, so your wife cheated and you will still let her back into your house? It becomes a problem because they feel as though a woman should not go out of their marriage. But for a guy, it's easy. I think I, that's, that's, that's my opinion. That's why I think it's easier for women to forgive than men. I could be wrong. Uh, no, but well, no, you I mean, the, the truth of the matter is it's a double standard, you know, like you said, women don't talk about it and can, and society gives them a pass. So it becomes like, okay, well, you know, um, women just don't, women just don't. I mean, something else people say is on the rise now that lots and lots more and more women are stepping out of their marriage. I don't know. Um, but it's a double standard, you know, the society society pardons men than it does women you know so it's just it's just what it is so you find women now just don't they don't talk women don't talk the same women you're going to talk to is going to be the women just don't talk it's like it's taboo you know and that lends to what i was saying um even if a man wanted to forgive a woman the other man will be like what yeah. No, it's not done. What are you talking about? You know? Yeah. And that in itself also, I mean, we can explore it further. You find that a certain sect of men, pro I think, and I've talked about this with my friends, that it's easier for um, a non-black person to forgive than a black man. A black man will forgive. We find that non-black person might, you know. Again, these are all... There's no statistics we're basing this on. This is just people talking, you know, friends hanging out, whatever, and just, you know, from 
things that happen around you. You find men, people would say a black man is more territorial than uh, uh, a man of a different ethnicity or, or racial um, uh, makeup. And people also say black women are more territorial. So it's possible. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't know. Do I have okay. anything backing it up? I don't know. But these are things people talk about. So right. that's cool. That's um, interesting. So those are some of the things that um, we picked up. Another thing, and I think we only had one, not one, but this one I wanted to talk about. And um, you talked about it in your podcast. And it's like, would you, if you had to rate which would you rather do? Would you rather be Nollywood or Hollywood? I don't even know what that means. Um, let me let me give it because I'm just picking the. I highlighted where I want to read. It's like you talked about. This is a guy. His name is Mark. You talked about Nollywood and that people don't like people lack discipline. Jesus, I can't read today. <coughs> people like discipline. So now that you are out of Nollywood, you're a Nollywood actor, but which would you rather be? Would you rather be in Nollywood or Hollywood? I don't know what that means. Okay. Okay. Good question. A child, it's born. The child doesn't remain a child forever. The child definitely will grow. If you compare Nollywood to Hollywood, Nollywood is like a baby to Hollywood. Mm, good, good. I started, I started in Nollywood. Right now, if you ask me, I would rather be in Hollywood and not lose consciousness of Nollywood because that's where I started from. Being in Hollywood doesn't mean I will forget everything about Nollywood. Now, here's the thing. You are an actor, you are an actor. You can play any type of role be it Hollywood or Nollywood. So wherever you're called upon to, you can easily go. Okay. There is no being in Nollywood or being in Hollywood. You're just an actor. Wonderful. That's my answer to that. Wonderful. That's, um, actually, that's a very good answer. I told you guys, his best. Yeah, he gives you those best answers. You know, best <laughs> good scenarios. No, that was a good, that was really good. I actually didn't know how you were going to answer that. Because I was going to be like, anyone would say, who doesn't like Hollywood? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I love the way you answer that. An actor is an actor. Right. If you had to feature in, I don't know, some movie in, some movie in China, it's, it's acting. You take your gig, you right. take your job, you do it to the best of your ability and knowledge, right. and you keep it moving. I, like, right. I really, really like that. I do. So, well, yeah, so, so what's happening lately? This is from Monica. What, what's new? What's happening lately? Monica said, um, I have voted for you before. Okay. Okay. One of your many voters. He said, I have voted for you before and it's true. You've met, you've, you've, you've won many awards as leading man, like Ameza said. Thank you. Um, so what is, what is new lately? That's what she said. What is new? What, what, so I guess what she's asking is, what are upcoming things you do? What are you doing? Does Monica have a last name? No, just said Monica. Well, you, you know uh, okay. Monica? <laughs> but there are many money. No, I said, well, there are many Monicas out there. So. There are many Monicas, yeah. yeah. Well, at, at, at the moment, coronavirus, COVID-19 has crippled a whole bunch of things. So mm -hmm. we're still on standby, trying to wait it out. When things die down, then we'll figure out what's next. As of right now, we're just on standby. Okay, so best is on standby. Best. I know you're doing stuff, <laughs> but he's keeping it on the wraps because Best is always busy. I can tell you right now. He is a busy man. And just, you know, 
make sure you visit uh, Bez Davis show on YouTube. And um, also, what is your uh, Twitter and Instagram? Do you have any one of those? If you want to plug it, go ahead. Every, every of my social media handle is Bez Davis. Bez Davis. And that's Davis with D-A-V-I-S. Correct. Because some of the things I got here is D-A-V-I-E-S. A lot of people do misspell my last name. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. So always, maybe you should try, you know, when you say Bez Davis, that's, you know, Davis with... Uh, um, D A V I S. Tell people because people always say Davis. They put the E in. So. Yeah. It might be yeah. something. Even the very first movie I did in the U.S. Right. The edit. The editor put my name as D A V I E S. I had to correct it before the movie was released. Right. Yeah, I don't know why people won't mistake my name. Well, because again, I think that's the more common or the more popular version of it, Davis. You know. Um, not very V-I-S. I'm not sure. I can't say. I'm, you know, I'm not uh, authority on well, that. I think it's more V-I-E-S. I think is more popular. It, it depends on where. I think back in Africa, V-I-E-S is mostly first name. You mean? Oh, really? Okay. V-I-E-S. Yes, it's oh. mostly first name. And it's funny because some people, when they write me, they, 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 they say, Mr. Davis, hey, oh, Davis, oh. Oh, hi, okay. Davis. Yeah, they think yeah. that's my first name. Oh, okay. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Again, yeah. if you're just tuning in, this is Amesa Live, and with me is the very entertaining Mr. Best himself. And uh, he's been able to field some questions from people who wrote to my podcast. Um, people are listening. So thank you, guys. I totally appreciate that. Um, and Mr. Best answered the questions in a very, very smooth. You're very smooth. You've been told that before. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you're smooth. You always give me compliments. You are the best. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. No, but you are, you're very smooth. I, I, again, I've talked to, I've talked about best. Um, you're very passionate about what you love, what you do. You do. And it shows you do. You, 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 you're a method actor. I think I mentioned that too. Yeah. Um, you go into, you, you disappear into your character and that's always good. I say, you know, a good actor, you know, um, and that's called method acting. That's really good. Um, something I'm sure uh, the person who asked, I think is Monica, was asking what's new, what's new lately. Um, um, just to piggyback of that, I'm going to say that just <clears throat> not only acting, but I think Bess is probably going to foray more into uh, directing. I've seen you on set. I have shared this with you. And I, I don't know if I can take the credit, but I know it's something I've Maybe because I saw it in you that you could, you'd be a good director. And I think I mentioned that to you. And I've seen you on set, you command respect. That's important if you're going to be a, a good director. You know, people have to listen to you. And I have seen you on set and you, you um, get people to listen to you. And they, you know, and well, I guess also because you take good direction, you do. So you give good direction. So that's that's wonderful in itself. So, um, well, talking about that, <clears throat> yes, you, you did say you don't know whether you should take credit or not. Yes, you should, um, because I remember when we we're on on set on the set of I Got Your Back, you did yeah. mention that to me. You did say something about me ben uh, venturing into the right yeah. thing. That was your idea. So okay. yes, absolutely, that credit goes to you. Thank you. And I did. I, I tried directing. I actually directed about three, four movies already. Wonderful. Wonderful. Wow. But uh, I kind of stopped the directing thing um, because I, I feel as though that's not my real calling, even though mm -hmm. it's something I know how to do and I do okay. Not mm -hmm. I do okay. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my main calling is acting. Mm -hmm. But if something comes up as for me to direct, it depends on what it looks like, what the script looks like. Uh, I could accept it or not. I don't know. Okay. 
Yeah, just so I kind of expantiate on that. Just you loving acting doesn't mean you can't direct. Do you see what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. love, you, you get so... Directing is a lot of work. It is. It is. It's a lot of headache. It's a lot of work. But it's something you, if you do venture into it, you will do quite well. However, you're not tired of acting yet. You have people, you have people like Clint Eastwood who's self-directing themselves. He's in his 80s almost 90. Um, and that's just what it is. You love your craft. You love acting. But you find that sometimes people, as they get older, and they're just like, you know what? I want to have more say. I want to do more, you know? So it doesn't stop you from acting. Acting is your first love. So you would always still act, you know? But I'm sure, again, like you said, if it comes your way and because not all movies that you're asked to direct, you want to be a part of. You probably just want right. to work with this one. Yeah, we're just going to keep directing this. Yeah. I don't think yeah. I want to act in this one, you know? And that's yeah. what I mean by, you know, because not everyone who directs knows how to direct. That's true. You know, that's yeah. True. So that's just expanding your repertoire. So it's been lovely, lovely. Um, you're going to be back because we're going to be talking about I Got Your Back. I love to talk about I Got Your Back because for many reasons, there's so many places we could take that. You know, it's about relationship dynamics, which I love to talk about, um, which it's life in itself. But um, yeah, it's something that um, we're probably going to, I'm going to have best back so we can just kind of dissect it because we haven't actually, we've always alluded to doing the movie together, but we've never really, excuse me, talked about the movie. Before you go, best, why do you think you're always leading man? What is it that people see that we're not seeing? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Yeah, I'm saying, um, why do you think you're leading man? Why do you think you're always chosen to be a leading man? At least to, from my understanding, you always are. Is there something people are seeing that we're not seeing? Why you always love a boy? <laughs> uh, in the beginning of this um, conversation interview, you did say something about my smile. That's probably one of the things. Oh, yeah. Say. You've got a know. lovely smile. I don't know. Well, on a, on a more serious note, though, I am... This is not just to twitch my horn. I just want to say it the way it is. I'm not trying to praise myself, but this is what I do. I take very seriously what I do. Uh, if once a script is sent to me and I accept that script, it's mine. And when I mean it's mine, I put my all in it, 100%. If the call time to set is 7 a.m., I'm there, 6.30. I have to be there to make sure I'm ready. Um, I, I, I've, I make sure I know my lines. That's, that's number one. Isn't I, it annoying when people don't know their lines? Huh? I said, is it not annoying? I'm, I'm, I'm it yeah. It's very, very. It is very, very. <laughs> it's very, very. I remember this, there was, I, I was on a set. Um, this was right when the coronavirus started. Um, this was, I think it was in February, I was on set, and I was playing alongside a girl, she's from Sierra Leone, and she's like, it was like a back, uh, backstage interview, um, and she was making fun, and just like, hey, people don't believe whatever Best David tells you, he's, he has his line already, and that's me, I, if you want to fool around, I already got my line, if you want to fool around with me, <laughs> hey, by all means, come on, let's fool around. But when it comes to action, that fooling around is over. So I make sure I study my lines. I make sure I study my character and get myself into that character. I guess that's one of the things. Uh, those are some of the things uh, producers see and feel comfortable and confident that I will be able to deliver. I don't know. I can't really speak for them. These are some of the things I think they see. But in a nutshell, I don't know what they see, really. That's very good. Yeah, well, I'm, I've been on set with you. You're very... You're serious about your craft. You are. And that's good. And people do notice. That's what sometimes people don't see that. People notice. 
And that's why you get jobs because people, no, nobody wants stress. Production, putting a production together is headache. Yeah. You don't want anyone that's going to give you a headache. You want a professional. Absolutely. You want mm -hmm. a professional. So thank you so much for hanging with us today. Again, this is Amaza Live, and I've been hanging with Best Davis. That's D-A-V-I-S. Okay, there's no E. Don't add your own soundtrack. It's, it's V-I-S, okay? Um, it's always lovely talking to you. It's always nice. Again, I told you guys, Best is going to be here, giving his own um, mill, you know, mill point of view to some of the topics that will be coming up. And um, he's a dear friend, and he is uh, someone I care for and love very much because, again, he's just he's, um, he's a wonderful person. Any last words before you leave? Um, what do you want to tell people? I always ask people this. I mean, people wanting to, someone's going to see this now and say, ah, how did this guy make it? How, did, how is he getting this lover boy role? Somebody might want to know. <laughs> what do you want to tell them? Well, um, first of all, I do want to appreciate you, amazing, amazing, or amazing live, amazing superstar. Um, thank you so much for bringing me on to this, this show. I totally appreciate you. Uh, you probably don't know. I value you so much. Oh. You are very much up there for oh, me. Oh, thank you. Um, oh. uh, people, if you don't know amazing very well, I know her very well. She's like a sister, so to say. She is one of the pioneers of Nollywood. I know I said this during the podcast. I will keep saying it until everyone <laughs> hears it. <laughs> if it starts getting annoying to you, let me know. Then I will keep saying it more. <laughs> You're not going to stop? <laughs> <laughs> no, I will increase it. <laughs> so um, she's one of the pioneers of Nollywood. Um, some of you have heard about, not some of you, majority of you have heard about Ramsey Noah, RMD Richard Mopedami Joe, uh, Christian Sani Mokwe, may also rest in peace, the late Christian Sani Mokwe, yeah. and so many more. Uh, what's her name? Chama Abota. Is that, is that her? I think that's her name. Chama, no, Chama Chukuka. Uh, what's this other lady's name? Um, I think she's Yoruba. Uh, some some Abota or something, something like that. Her last name is Abota. Um, well, that's to tell you, it's a lot of people amazing introduced into Nollywood. These people wouldn't have been what they are if they did not hook up with amazing. Mm -hmm. When I say hook up, I'm sorry, not hook up in that manner. But like, <laughs> together with amazing, amazing introduced them into Nollywood and they are all celebrities. You can imagine the people she introduced as celebrities. Not a talk of the person who introduced them. Mm. She might be. She she always try to play it low. She is a big time celebrity. People, Google amazing. You will see what I'm talking about. You need to visit her YouTube channel. Actually, she just changed the name, right? So amazing, amazing live. live. Yeah, amazing live. Yeah. Be amazing superstar, but now it's amazing live. So <laughs> visit that YouTube channel. And she didn't mention something about I got your back. The movie that we uh, were in together. I'm sure it's up there. I, yeah. I, I was able to watch part mm -hmm. one. Part one, yes. Uh, okay, so yeah, guys, visit, watch that movie and then let us know what you think. You, you need to watch that movie. I'm serious. You need to watch that movie. <laughs> you do, if you don't watch that movie, don't call, don't, don't text me. Don't, don't ask questions about me. Go, go to an amazing life and watch that movie. And you can write amazing and tell her what you think. You can text me, write me after you watch that movie. If you don't watch it, don't text me. Um, yeah, so Amazing is a very, very nice person, passionate person, very loving and lovable. Every good thing you can think of. I do appreciate you, Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. And then, final say to people, um, Amazing did say something about people might have questions about uh, what why do you keep getting this lover boy role? Why do you keep getting calls? Why do you keep getting scripts? I, I, I think I already did answer that. It's just know your craft and be who you are. Don't be who you are not. When you begin to be who you are not, that's deceptive. 
and then once you begin to deceive people and they notice you're deceiving them, that's the end. That for me, if I yeah. give I give people a lot of chances, once you prove me wrong, I cut you off. A lot of people are like that. So once they notice that deceptive act in you, that will be it. So yeah. just be who you are and yeah. let them see you and see the seriousness in you. You will make it so far. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. What a, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. And that's, the, you know, that's very important. Be you. If you come off fake, that's it. Yep. In show business, sometimes you don't have a second chance to create, right. you know, any kind of impression. I mean, the fact that you right. got in through the door, you're not the only one. So the fact that you got a crack into the door, uh, you hit the ground running. You better be bringing out your A game. Right. Because people talk. Directors, producers, your ca cl castmates, you know. Everyone talks. If you're, if you're a problem, nobody wants to work with you. If you're phony, nobody wants to work with you. That's just extra baggage. Absolutely no not. Just be you. Just be you. That's, that's something. That's, that's a good point there. Just be you. Thank you so much. Best is always, always, it's, it's, it's always lovely talking to you. You never, you just, you attack those questions. They come in and you do them and it's lovely. Again, it's Again, this is Ameza Live. Um, please follow me, subscribe to my channel uh, on YouTube, Ameza Live. Today, I officially changed the name from Ameza Superstar to Ameza Live. And my podcast is also Ameza Live. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Ameza Superstar. I don't know if I'm going to change that. But right now, it's still Ameza Superstar. <laughs> okay, write to me. People love to write, men and women. So just keep writing, okay? And um, I'll catch you on the next episode. All right, thank you so much, Best. Thank I'll, you. Uh, I'll catch you. He'll be back, okay? All righty. Take care. <laughs> okay.